Excellent. So we're going to start. Uh, we've been on a break. I was uh, on a massive seminar, and uh, but uh, today we are going to restart uh, how to attract money in 2024. Uh, this is part two, and it is March 14, 2024. And are you ready to start? Are you ready to start? Yes, excellent. Yes, beautiful. Perfect, Anna. Yes, Gali, Eva, perfect. Okay, good. So I definitely need more participation. Yes, Anita, excellent. Okay, agreements, agreements. If you do any recording, it is very important that you tag us at G Prosperity Now or Mayor Ezra Official. Nothing I said today is true, unless, of course, it is true for you. Don't allow me to move from point A to point B before you understand point A. I don't need you to agree with point A, but I definitely need you to understand. Once you understand, you can agree or not. It is the ability to do the drills, not just the listening, that will produce the results. So if you don't produce results, it is because you're not doing the drills. Everything I teach is simple. Actually, when things do not work, it's only because someone added complexity. Anything in your life that do not work, it is because someone added complexity. If something do not work, all you have to do is to find what's the added complexity and thing will work. It's quite amazing. Now, everything I teach is simple. Truth results in simplicity and lies result in complexities. The law is for as long as it is not simple, it contains lies. And here we go. Money attracting viewpoints money attracting viewpoints so what do you think attract money what kind of viewpoints attract money what do you think attract money what kind of viewpoints what is the key viewpoints lots of communication out yes the all viewpoints yes what are the money attracting viewpoints? What is the viewpoints that if you have them, money will simply come to you and if you want, it will run away from you. Open communication. Yes, love the fellow man. Excellent, Eva. Ability to understand and take action. That it's easy to get money. Yes, very true. Okay, okay. Very good. So let's have a look. There are quite a few money attracting viewpoints. If you will fully duplicate them, you will see that money will simply come to you. Okay. So the first money attracting viewpoint is the way to happiness. It is a method of operation or a method of approach that insists that the only way to actually have the income is by doing good by earning the income ethically. You will see that um, how people earn the income out ethically is by uh, thinking that they need to work less and earn more. By thinking that work is something difficult. Work is something that is the most enjoyable thing. And if it's not, you are slave to the work because you have to do it. A slave don't like to work. A free man like to work. When a person says, I don't like my work, basically he says, I'm a slave. And it's just a viewpoint. Does it make sense to you? Actually, the only if you look at what do you think what do you think define the wealth of a nation what do you think define the wealth of a nation ethics okay production mm -hmm. how free the country is gdp 
production. Mm -hmm. The wealth of the nation is defined by three things. Number one, the willingness of its populace to work. Number one is the willingness to work. Because if you are willing to work, you'll bring good results. If not, you won't. The second is the quality of the logic or of the knowingness of its people, of its thinking people, of the people that, that um, plan of, or strategize or define how the nation will go. So when the thinking is in a very good high condition, the money is wealthy. And the third is the assets of that country. But the most important one, the most important one is the willingness of the people to work. And it's quite interesting that the more willing you are to work, the smarter you will get and the more assets you will have. And the less willing you are to work, the stupider you will get, you'll start to commit sins, you'll start to become unethical and the less assets you will have, the less resources you will have. So the resources of the country, the smartness of its uh, thinking men or of its leaders and the willingness to work is what's define the wealth of the country. It's not how much money you have because you have a country that has, money is just a measurement of those things. You have countries that have or had a lot of money, but the people were unethical, unwilling to work, and so the money was not used. It was just being stolen by a few people. Are you with me? Now for a person, for a person, the wealth of a person is his ability to be logical or not interpolated. That's number one, which comes from how ethical he is his willingness to work, and the number of friends that he has. That's what defines the wealth of a person. That's all. So if you're willing to work, and if you know how to keep good relationships, and if you are not unethical, you will have money. And if you don't have money, it's either you're unwilling to work, Although you say you are, or you are unethical, or you don't have actual friends, your relationship sucks. Are you with me? So the first money attracting viewpoint, it is, wow, it's unbelievable, is the way to happiness. It is a method of operation, an approach that insists that the only way to actually have the income is by doing good, by earning the income ethically. It is an effort to live with the truth. It is the insistence on income that is the result of improved conditions, not cheating someone. It is a method of I do the job so well that if something do not go well in my area, regardless of how well, blah, blah, I don't justify, I take responsibility. I don't quit, I take responsibility. I don't blame, I take responsibility. I don't run away. I take responsibility, and if not, you will see that this person, if he's quitting, he will quit on, on all relationships. Uh, he has a problem with uh, his friend, he will quit. He has a problem with his um, uh, body, he will quit. He will, has a problem with his ex, he will quit. He will always quit. That person that don't operate in that way, if he operate, if his method of operation is quitting, he will quit. It is just an untruth, it's just an out ethics method of handling problems, of handling life. So money attracting viewpoint number one, it is an effort to live with the truth. Effort to live with the truth. You don't find the wrong reason for the problem. The usual thing is people find the wrong reason for the problem and they think, no, but I'm saying the truth. No, you don't say the truth. If you have problems, unsolved problem, obviously you are not looking at the truth. 
Oh, I'm working so hard. I don't have time. Bullshit. You're not work, working so hard. You're wasting so much time. I haven't met one person that actually work hard, that actually work efficiently, not even close, not one person. Maybe in moments of high demands for a week, the person work hard or work efficiently, maybe. But most of the people, most of the time, waste time. Out ethics, they don't live with the truth. So it is an effort to live with the truth. It is an, the insistence on income that is the result of improved conditions that you bring. It is the insistence on ensuring me and the other side are happy. It is insisting on causing the greatest good for the greatest number of being, people and things. Are you with me? Okay. This is really, really key. Most people don't see that they are not ethical. Most people don't see that they don't insist to live with the truth. They don't see that they don't actually bring an improved condition. And when they see that the condition is not improved, the first thing they do, they justify. The first thing they do, they depart. The first thing they do, they flee this, the area. The first thing they do, they blame. The first thing they do, they say that they are weak, which is not living with the truth because you're extremely powerful. Are you with me? The first thing they do, they act insanely. And you need, you yourself, as a, as a person that manage them, need to realize that this is what it is and decide, is that person worthy of investment in? Is he actually willing to work? Is he actually have friends? Is he making friends? Does he try to make friends or does he try to isolate? And uh, is he actually ethical or not? Now, the prerequisite, the prerequisite for success is, a, is the decision that happiness is the prerequisite for success. And you will not be happy before you will decide to act ethically, despite all invitations to do otherwise. If you want to be successful, you will see that happiness is prerequisite for success. If you want to be alone, if you don't like people, if you are unwilling to communicate, if you don't want to create more friends, you don't have wealth, even if you have money, you will not actually enjoy it. You may protect it, you may worry about it, you may many things, but you will not have money. Are you with me? So the first viewpoint, I love people. I'm going to be ethical. I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to blame. And when things do not go right, I will take responsibility. I will find the real why. I will not add more lies. I will not blame someone else. I will not say, well, I'm weak, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough, or whatever, all those nonsense. No, you take responsibility, and you know that whatever happened, you can fix. That's number one. Good. Number two. The second money attracting viewpoint is law and order. Law and order. It is a method of operation that insists that the only way to actually have the income you earn is by earning income legally. Now, many people act illegally in their earning of the income. They don't pay tax, they cheat, they steal, they don't actually do what they're supposed to do. They overcharge, they undercharge, they don't pay what they're supposed to pay, and then they wonder why they don't have money. Like they will buy from you, they will get service from you, they will be extremely happy, but they will not pay you. This is all falling under law and order. 
So if you owe money to other people, you will never, ever, ever have money. Are you with me? It is not that you don't have money and that's why you will not have, and that's why you cannot pay. It is because your viewpoint is I'm criminal and I'm not paying. And because I'm not paying, you know that you are criminal, so you cannot have more power by having money. So you're cutting your own money and you know that uh, if you steal from someone else, not pay someone else money that you owe them, they, other people will steal from you. They will not pay you. Now, they don't have to steal from you just by going and going to your house and stealing your laptop. They will just not buy from you. And even if they will buy from you, you will lose the money. If you don't pay the money that you own, you will not have money. If you don't pay, if you don't contribute to people that help you, which is to the country that help you, which is going against the law, you will not have money. If you act illegally, you will not have money because if you have, you, you're trying to hide, you don't try to communicate and money comes from communication. Even undercharging is not ethical, but that's under operating ethically in point number one. Here I'm talking about order, law and order. It's illegal not to pay. Not to pay, it's illegal. People uh, go and uh, uh, do bankruptcies. And people that do bankruptcies, you see, they don't pay to other people the money that they own. And in most cases, in most cases, those people that do bankruptcy one time will do more bankruptcies. I have a, a friend that um, he's a lawyer in Israel and he deals with bankruptcies. And one time he came to me and he says, man, look, I really need to increase my income. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, most of your income should come from your existing customers. Contact those people that are your existing customers. He said, no, but I'm dealing with bankruptcy. They went bankrupt and that's it. They, I cannot charge them again. They will, they're not customers. And I told him, you're wrong. If they went bankrupt once, they will go bankrupt 20 times. And we started to call those people and guess what? Same problem, bankruptcy. Now those people that in bankruptcy do have money, how do I know? How do I know that they're cheating the debtors? Because they pay for my friends, the lawyer. So they do have money. Are you with me? If you act illegally, you will not have money. You will not have money, end of story. Doing anything illegal, regardless if you are caught or not, make you a target and weaken you as it always is accompanied by the fear of being found out. Supporting or ignoring illegal acts will hurt you. Any advantage of committing illegal acts are in most cases, imagine and damaging. You actually don't have any advantage in most cases of when you commit a legal act. And hence, the prerequisite for success is the decision, I will always act only within the law of the land. If you don't have this viewpoint, believe me, no money for you. Does it make sense? If you will check, if you will check, before you started to have money issues, you did something either that is out of the way to happiness, the first point or the second point. People that actually have money have most of those viewpoints handled in. Are you with me? Now people that are so bad that they don't even see what, that they, what they do is illegal or against the law. They don't even see it. It's so justified that they don't even know, for example, that if you don't pay your bills, it's illegal. They don't know that. They don't know that it's not okay not to pay your tax. They don't know uh, that uh, um, uh, cheating is illegal. It's just illegal. Okay.
Next one. The third money attracting viewpoint is the unwillingness to use the law inappropriately to hurt another. Now, this is really, really interesting. It is a method of operation that insists that the only way to actually have income is by insisting to uphold all one's obligation, to keep your words one's giving at any cost, even if the law allows otherwise bankruptcies, trust, etc. You find that people find all kinds of creative ways to do something illegally. If you understand that and you don't agree and you don't do those things that are legally, but it's using the law in an inappropriate way, it's not the intention of the law to create loopholes in order to do something unethical. If you understand that and you don't do that, you will have money. If not, you will not have money. If you decide, ah, you know what, I'm going to set up a trust uh, to take from my husband or from my wife a certain amount of money, uh, so it's stealing. You will see, people will steal from you. It's actually quite amazing that you do that and like the sun rise, rise, someone will steal from you. Someone will do to you what you've done to others. Are you with me? If you look at your life, if you will actually confront, you say, yes, of course, it's happening. It's totally happening. So the prerequisite for success is the decision. I will uphold all my obligation, all my obligations, regardless of my ability to get release from them legally. Whatever it takes, I will be trusted. If you are not trusted, you have no future. If you have a, an agreement, I mean, I borrow $100 and when I go to pay it back, the person says, no, 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 it is not $200. What do you do? So, far, so this person will not have money because he is violating those money attracting viewpoints. And in that case, of course, you need to insist on upholding the agreement. I'm talking about what you're doing. If someone doing it to you, believe me, you have done it to someone else. Have a look, Arjuna. If someone done it to you, you have done it to someone else. It's quite unbelievable. It is so amazing that um, I was handling one person the other day uh, that uh, came to me and told me that he has a problem with uh, one of his contractors that doing bad job. Um, and I said, well, you have done bad job for someone else. And he said, but I'm not a contractor. I never done dealt with rehab, rehabs or buildings or anything like that. I said, yes, true, you didn't. But have you done bad job to your parents? Have you done bad job at school? Have you done bad job when someone gave you something and you didn't do what you're supposed to do? Have you de delayed doing something that you were supposed to? And he all of a sudden found something really, really, really amazing when he was younger. And once he found it, once he found it, something like a miracle happened. The, the guy that was running his um, uh, rehab, his uh, renovation, was fired. A new guy arrived with new team. It, it was a very, like, totally new team for that company. And they were, like, amazing. Amazing beyond amazing. They finished the job in less than two weeks. Everything was perfect. There was almost no punch list, no, nothing to fix. Everything was perfect. It's not by mistake. What about those who set up trust to transfer their wealth and not pay any tax and their families uh, grow wealth over a generation? Uh, that, that's perfectly okay because it's not cheating anyone. If you set up a trust without cheating anyone, it's totally fine. If you operate within the law, it's totally fine. But if you set up a trust to steal from someone, to cheat one of your family members, to cheat one of your partners, to do something that is not what the law intended to, that's not okay. It's quite amazing, always amazing. Number four, 
the fourth money attracting uh, viewpoint is I deserve everything. If you don't know you deserve to have money and a lot, you will not have any money. You have as much money as you consider you deserve. But you need to understand that you deserve on a gradient. Are you with me? And the basic law is that long before you can count the money, you need to have the money. Heaviness is something that happens in your mind, not in the physical universe. How do I know? Because one person can have a hundred dollars and he feels that he's wealthy, and another person in another same situation feels that he has a hundred dollars and he feels that he's poor. I never felt that I'm poor. People in my town had the same amount of money, but they felt that they are poor. I never felt that they are, I'm poor because I knew long before I counted the money that I am a millionaire, a multimillionaire. I knew that. I knew that from school. I met, a, I met a friend from school many, many years later when I was about 40 or something like that, and I told him about what I'm doing, and he told me, now, I, I knew. And I said, what do you mean you knew? And he told me, do you remember when we, sat next, when we stood next to the red gate the bed the big gate and you told me that you will do this and this and that and you have money and i was telling you what do you mean you have money you don't have it and i said no i have the money i have it i know i have it it's it's there and i didn't remember that i told him that but he remembered it very well once he reminded me i remember the, the conversation but i had the money way before i had the money now why would you not have the money why would you not have the money because you think that you do something wrong with the money, that you will cause bad if you're not ethical, if you're cheating, if you're not operating according to the law, if your hands are not clear, you will not have money. You will prevent yourself from having power if your hands are not clean. Are you with me? So, Long before you can count the money, you need to have the money. And the only way to have is clean hands. You need to help. Dirty hands are the result of failure to help. When a person commits a sin, because he's so good, the, res the, the reason he committed the sin is simply because he failed to help. Sin, every sin that you ever committed, is an action that you've done in an effort to help. But because you didn't know, you didn't have the knowledge, you didn't have the technology, you wanted to help someone, but you didn't. You were not exactly the most advanced doctor at that city, but you were a doctor, a witch doctor, and you didn't actually help. And after a few times that you didn't help, you realize, oh, my hands are bad. I'm, I committed too many sin. I killed a lot of people. So you stop helping. Is being unethical and dirty hands are the same? Yes, generally the same. It isn't, it's not exactly the same, but generally is the same. So, how much do you deserve? How much do you deserve? How much do you think that you deserve? Write down, how much do you deserve? How much do you think? A lot is not, it's nothing. A lot is zero. A lot is like not confronting, yes? You need to have a number. What does it mean a lot? A lot from whose viewpoint? A lot for what? To buy a loaf of bread or a lot to buy Coca-Cola or a lot to buy Lamborghinis? Okay, $10 million. Okay, so you need to write something, how much you deserve on a gradient. So if you, throw, if you make today $50,000 per month, per year, and you write, I want to make $10 million or $20 million, mm, never going to happen. You need to set up the target that is actually achievable because long before you can count the money, you need to have the money. And this nonsense is, oh, I want to make a, a billion dollars. Oh, wonderful, forget about it. You'll never make a billion dollars. But if you say, I want $100,000, if I just have $100,000, I'm fine. Then you make 100,000, 200, 300, and then you say, okay, fine, I want 500. And then you may say, I want 1 million. And then you say, I want 10 million. 
the fact that you say today I want 100 do not prevent you from ever saying 200. Are you with me? So it's have to be logical. It's have to be logical for you. Something within your gradient. If you make so far $10,000 this year and you want to make a million dollars this year, uh, uh, mm, mm, no, no. Let's go for 100,000. Let's go for 100,000. Let's make the 100,000. Let's go for 50,000. Something that is within the gradient because otherwise you're adding a lie. You know it's not real for you because you don't have it. So we're just trying to push the barriers a little bit and not create a total uh, disagreement. Double my monthly income before the end of the year. That's amazing. That's an excellent goal. Are you with me? So it has to be, it has to be with the gradient. It's not just think big. It's wonderful to think big. It's wonderful. But we are talking about applicable money attracting viewpoints, something that you can go with to the shop and buy. How many of you said in the past, yes, I want to make a million dollars. I will do, I'll, do, I'll make a lot of money. I will make a lot of money. And you didn't make anything, yes? Because it was a lie. It was not real. You, you violated this long before you can count the money. You need to have the money. Are you with me? Does it make sense to you? So you need to have the money. Okay. So now you wrote how much you're going to, how much you deserve. Now I want you to answer ethically, honestly, honestly. I need you to really answer honestly because it will help you. Why, why do you deserve that money? 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 I'm good. Okay. I'm good is that. How many people think that they are good? Is that a change? If you see someone in the street, a beggar in the street, and he's good. Is that good? Is, is that a reason? Is that meaning that he deserved the money? What, why people deserve money? Why people deserve money? So I can provide for my family. So if you need to provide for the family, it means that because you want to provide for your family, uh, what we need is every person that they need to provide, we will check how much he can need to provide. And according to that, we'll give you money. Mm -mm. I bring even more value to those I help. Okay, that's more, more in line, but it's too general. I help people many ways to improve their well-being. Yes, that's more in line. If you help another, yes, yes, they help. Okay, I'm offering high quality service. That's good because I'm helping many people get more clients and expand their business. And by that, enable them to make a positive. Okay, so if you can see, all those answers are true, but are not accurate. It's non confront. Are you with me? If you say, I deserve $100,000 per year because I help 500 people to make each $10,000 per year, which means the value that I give is five million dollars then and i get one hundred thousand it's within line because i give much more help than what i receive so it's actually in line if not you you just think that you deserve so i would suggest that you will go to russia and join the um, the party and they will give you money because you deserve because your family needs it are you with me yeah 
So if you don't sit down and actually write down, what's the value that you give? How are you going to help others? What is the actual value? You will not get this money. It's just nonsense. Oh, I want 100,000 per month. Fine. You want, I also want. Believe me, every beggar in the street wants money. Every person in every communist country wants money. And he thinks that he deserves it because he's good. Are you with me? You really have to sit down and to say, how much I deserve? Okay, good. So why do I deserve that money? What's the help that I give? What's the value that I give to others that allow me to get portion of that value to me as pay? If I give you a value of $100 and I take from you $200, it's not right. Are you with me? So you really, you really need to sit down and figure out for yourself, why do you deserve that money? And that's what most people never do. And so they never have money. And so they cheat, and so they violate, they go illegal, and so their hands get dirty. And so they, they, they know that they don't deserve the money. They know they cannot have the money, so they will not have the money. You see, your only problem, your only problem, each one of you, is, your, is that you are good, that you are ethical. And, when you, and you know when you're doing something bad. And when you do something bad, you immediately cut your power. There are disasters, you have bad luck, you're born to the wrong family, uh, there is someone steal from you. Something happened to make sure that you will not do something bad but you still don't have to admit that you did something bad. And by the way, if you will actually admit that that was not the best thing to do, and you take responsibility, you don't blame yourself, you don't do any one of those nonsense things, you don't blame someone else, you don't run away, you don't say I'm weak, you don't say I cannot do this job, you don't say any one of those nonsense, you just take responsibility and say, oh, okay, fine, I see that, so here is how I'm going to handle it. What do you think will happen? money will run and find you. You will not be able to hide from this thing. But you need to change the viewpoint. You need to have money attracting viewpoints. Right, right now what you have is you buy the nonsense of people that you just think big, just make a number, uh, make a vision board, put a number and it will come. Think strongly and it will, be str and it will come to you. No, if you think strongly, you will do nothing. You need to actually confront the exchange. How much do I deserve? Why do I deserve the money? Does it make sense to you? Excellent. Good. So as a freelancer, how would you figure out uh, how much uh, my help is generating for my clients? I do a project, I get paid. For the work after that, I have uh, no idea how much project is helping them. You need to find out. You need to find out if the project, what you get, what you get should be more or less eight, it, not more than eight of what they're making. Because for every dollars that they pay, they need to make at least eight dollars to pay you the one dollar. Are you with me? Most people, uh, <laughs> I had this uh, friend that, um, that had, the, he was uh, um, in court with his wife. They were getting divorced. And um, his wife had um, a business and he was uh, just uh, handling the kids. And um, he came to me and he says, look, this lady, she's so bad. She's stealing money from me. And I said, why? He said, because she's making the money, I was handling the kids, and she needs to pay me 50%. I said, okay, 50% sounds good. 50% of what? He says, from the business. I said, okay, that sounds good, 50% of the business. And uh, how much is it? And he says, well, she make a million uh, shekel, in that case it was in Israel, a million shekel in per year, so she need to give me 500,000. And I said, I... Uh, you make 
a million shekel per year? I, he said, yes. And I said, how do you know? She, he says, well, I saw the bank. I saw how much money coming in. And I said, but how much co money coming in do not mean that she have any money left to spare. This, it's not the profit. And it took a long, 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 long time to explain to him that the profit is maybe 5%. If she's good, it's 10%. So if she make a million uh, shekel per year after she bring money for the house to live and da, da, da. If she set aside a 10,000 shekel per year, it's a miracle. So he should get 5,000. And it took a lot of work to actually explain to him that the value is not if you charge one, if you if I buy something that costs a thousand dollars, I need to make eight thousand dollars at least. Most people don't understand it, and the difference between uh, successful people and poor people, or rich people and poor people is. Rich people understand it. So when they get $10,000, they know that after they pay all the expenses and whatever, maybe, maybe they have $1,000 left and they don't run and spend it. But what they do, they invest it. The usual person in the street run and spend the money on nonsense that he doesn't need. And he doesn't understand that he doesn't have $10,000 he have maybe 1,000. Yeah. Yes, if you make $8,000, because you have expenses, because there is a, a lot of things. I'm not going to explain exactly all of this uh, right now. But if you look in your life, you'll see that the money you make, how much actually left for you is maybe 10%, maybe 10% because you need to pay tax 40% and you need to pay employees and you need to pay uh, education and you need to pay systems and you need to pay and you need to pay and you need to pay. To spend $1, you need to make at least eight. And most people don't understand it, so they spend the money they make. Are you with me? Do you get the idea? Now, if you understand that, you understand that how much money you deserve is also the same way. So if I help a client to make $8, they should pay me one. Yes, they should pay you 80 cents. Yes. That's the actual, that's the actual calculation. Are you with me? So if I charge a client 10,000, then the all right for the client should be 80. Yes. If you spend, how much it costs you to run your business versus how much money you make? How much, what is the average person, what is the average net profit of a business? What is the average net profit of a business? Average net profit of a business. What do you think the average net profit of a business in, the, in across the world? Five to ten percent, good. Fifty percent, fifty thousand dollars is not a. It's not. It's not the profit of a business. Yes, it's in percentage. It's not forty-five percent. Chin my no business making forty-five percent, ever. Five to ten percent, unless if you are cheating. Yes, if someone still it can make forty-five percent. Net profit of a business five to ten percent. Okay. So if the net profit is five to ten percent, it means that if I made one dollar, if I spend one dollar, I need to make ten. Do you understand? Which means that the value, how much money I deserve, if I deserve one dollar, the person that give me the one dollar must make ten. Do you understand that or not? If you don't understand that, you will not understand why you are out of change. You will not understand why people don't pay you. Yes. Only if you understand that, you will. The usual thing is people think, oh, 
I'm working so hard. Who cares how hard you're working? What's the value that you actually bring? I work so hard is just a way to justify not working hard. Because work is a joy, and if it's not a joy, it's nonsense. If work is not something that you enjoy, it is totally, totally, totally out ethics. You can say that work is as valuable as it is enjoyed by the individual. Never, never, never as it's paid. Are you with me? That's from the individual viewpoint. From the businessman viewpoint, it's you need to be ethical. You need to charge in a way that makes sure that the other side make at least eight times. How about value behind money when you improve someone? It's, it's value. It's, it's value. It's value because this is also can be monetized. Because if someone will, if I help someone not to be sick, and now he got, uh, he's not sick. Uh, so how much money it worth is, you can say how many months of non-working, how many blah, blah, blah. If you see that a person, I help a person and all of a sudden he got um, uh, money from somewhere, that's how much money I brought him. Even if this money came from, the, from a dove that uh, all of a sudden decided to leave a piece of check and that arrived into your hand. It's not important how. It's all can be calculated. Are you willing to confront? That's a different question. Everyone with me? If you don't have money, you don't have this concept. If you don't have money, you don't understand this concept. So you say that you deserve money, but you don't know why you deserve it. So what you act, you act like a communist, and it's to each according to his uh, need. Das Kapital, yes? Oh, this is how much my family need, that's why, how much I want. No, 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 no. How much money you make for others, that's what defines it. What about people that just use coupons to buy, to buy groceries, etc. they are cheating the cross if they're cheating i don't i'm not going into different specific ways how people cheating if they're cheating if someone need to buy to use coupons to buy something they're already poor and useless no they already don't have the viewpoint of money attracting of money attracting viewpoint the, the viewpoint that they have is money repelling viewpoints what we've done in the in the other uh, webinars so the prerequisite for success is the decision that I will keep my hand clean so I will deserve the right to help a lot. And as a result, have a lot of income. How much income you have? According to how much you help. And if you don't know how to calculate it, if you don't calculate it, if you don't actually confront it, you will use a lot of excuses to explain why your boss is not right and why this guy is useless and why and why and why and why and why and you will not have money. This is something you need to confront. This is money attracting viewpoints that people that don't have money obviously don't have them. Obviously. Because if you do have that, if you do understand that well, if I make $1, I need to make for this guy 10 If you go to someone and you say to him, look, I'm going to make you $10, and you don't tell him how much it costs, you tell him, I'm going to make you $10, what he will say, okay, let's do it. How much do you want? And you say, one, 10%, and he'll say, yes, I'm with you. When I plan something, when I, when I, when I price a product, when I do anything, I look at the other viewpoint, because otherwise you don't look at the other viewpoint. You actually don't look at the other viewpoint. You look at only on your viewpoint. The fifth money attracting viewpoint is the law of smiling. The law of smiling. This is a very important law, probably one of the most important laws. You must earn money with joy. And joy is the manifestation of honest hearts. Joy is the manifestation of honest art. Every day, 
that you were upset. I don't care what's the stories that you say. You're upset because your heart is not honest in that day. Are you with me? Joy is the manifestation of honest hearts. Yes. If you don't have joy today, if you don't enjoy your work, if the work is not as valuable as it's enjoyed by you, not, never as it is paid, you need to know that there's a dishonesty. Never something else. You have a job, you, you look and there's some kind of a big thing, bad thing that happened. If you will be honest, you'll say, yes, it's me. And you take responsibility. If not, your automatic thing will be to justify and blow, leave the area. You will try to leave the area because you don't have honest art, so you cannot be smiling. Yes. Everyone with me? Does it make sense to you? Now, there is only one thing, only one thing that you should object to. And the only one thing you should object to is no fun, no joy. Because the pay, the pay is joy. The pay is not money. The pay is communication. The pay is friendship. The pay is understandings. The pay is life and you do not live when you don't have joy. You try not to die. Are you with me? That's the pay. Cash is not the pay. It just happened that when you have joy, cash come to you because cash has, has emotion. Believe it or not, but money has an emotion. And when the money see joy, money come to you. Money come to joy. That's what attract money. But you cannot be joyful if you are dishonest. So you must earn money with joy and joy is the manifestation of honest art. And you will then understand, it will be very clear to you why work is as valuable as it is enjoyed by the individual, never as it's paid. Never as it's paid. And most people demand more pay and less work. Most people avoid work. When you avoid work, you are a slave to Instagram. You are a slave to entertainment. You are a slave. When you find that you don't want to work, that it's not the most enjoyable thing for you to do, you need to know you've been not honest for a while. It's really something you want to confront if you want money. If you don't want money, you don't have to confront it. If it is fun to do, if, if, it, is, if, if it isn't fun to do it, there is no pay possible. If it was not fun, skip the pay and you will be okay. If there is no fun, don't get the money. Don't take the money and you'll be okay. Don't take the money. You'll take an average person that works for a company that don't actually understand what you tell them. They do things robotically and so on. You will see it's impossible for them to get more pay. Not honestly. They can cheat you. They can, uh, they can force you to pay them more. They can to pay them more. They can do all kinds of unethical things, but they themselves will not have money and every day they will become more stupid and less happy. Why then does it seem like most miserable job gives you the most money? I never seen them. I don't know what is a miserable job. I never seen a miserable job. I never seen a miserable job. Never. 
And if you know those laws, you can paint and make money. You can be an artist and make money or pay a squash and make money, but you don't know this. So you have an excuse for why you don't have money. If you understand what I was teaching in this seminar from the beginning, you cannot not have money. If you understand the money attracting viewpoint, if you understand the money uh, uh, deflecting viewpoint, if you understand everything I, I was explaining so far in, in this series, you need to be genius not to have money. It's impossible not to have money, but you need to understand and apply. And the problem people, the reason people don't understand because understanding is the result of communication. And if you have misunderstood words, you don't have communication. If you commit a sin, you don't have communication. If you operate on fake realities, you don't have communication. If you don't understand what I taught you, and you go and you go online and hear all these nice uh, slogans, oh, do money in three minutes, blah, blah, blah. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. If you learn this axiom, the truth that I'm teaching you, if you actually go and relearn what I taught you, and, and by the way, that's why I'm doing the business class, because I know that in order for someone to learn and apply it, I need to break it down to small, 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 small parts, that the person can learn, apply, come the next week, learn, apply, come the next week, 50 weeks. This is the business class that we're doing. So if you actually, if you actually do the steps, you cannot not make money. Impossible not to make money and a lot. Does it make sense to you? Excellent. Society insists on seriousness. Thank you, Shamaya. Society insists on seriousness, no joy, no fun in production, yet there is no production without fun. Joy is the result of production. It's not that you have first joy and then production. You produce and so you have joy. And production is the recognition that you will help, are helping or will help and will get exchange for your help. But it has to be exchange. It has to be one to ten. It has to really be understood that if you are uh, someone that operated a machine, what the machine makes is actually calculated, and it has to be calculated in such a way that at the end of the day, the business has at least ten percent profit, five to ten percent profit. And you think, well, that's easy. No, it's not. It's not because most people don't make this five, five to ten percent profit. How do I know? Ninety-five percent of businesses, ninety to ninety-five percent of businesses, will be going, will go bankrupt or will be closed with the loss to the owners within the first five years. So it's not. It's it's very simple, but it's not easy because most people operating on lies. Joy, happiness is a prerequisite for earning money ethically. And joy comes from production. Really, joy comes from production. What does it mean, production? From helping other people. And you thought that, that uh, money and joy come from being paid. No. Work is as valuable as it is enjoyed by the individual never as it is paid, never, never, never. Are you with me? So the prerequisite for success is the decision, is the decision, never do things for the pay or reward, as your ability to work will start caving in and you will not have any joy, any life, any money. Never do things for the pay or reward. Never, never, never. Make sense? Amazing. Amazing. Now the six, the six money attracting viewpoint is the love for tax. Tax 
is an indication of profit. Do you understand that tax is an indication of profit? Yeah, good. So for as long as you will try to avoid tax, you will avoid profit. Does it make sense to you? Actually, should have done this long ago. This is really so simple. Tax is an indication of profit. So for as long as you will try to avoid tax, you will avoid profit. The viewpoint should be, I love to pay taxes while paying as little as legally allowed. Why while paying as little as legally allowed? Because if I love paying taxes, uh, it means I love making money, but I want to have a big profit. Tax is your exchange with the country, with society, in return for the infrastructure of the country. You really have to understand that you're using the infrastructure of the country, using the roads, you're using the, uh, the lights, you're using uh, uh, electricity, you're using, you have, uh, you have security, you have an army, you have... Um, airports, you have all kind of things that you use. Now, when a country become insane and the tax become illegal itself, when the tax become not right itself, you will see that the willingness of people to work will drop and this company in this country will lose one of the three pillars of its wealth, which is the willingness to work. So there's a balance between too much illegal tax or unethical tax to not paying tax. The pillars of, of wealth for, country, for any country is the quality of uh, its, uh, the quality of the thinking of its leaders, its natural resources, and the most important, the willingness of its citizen to work. And when you lose the willingness of a citizen to work, even if the country will rape other countries like Russia did, a communist Russia raped other countries. They went to more and more countries. Why do you think they, they went to Czech Republic and all those countries around them? Because they raped them. They stole their resources because the people were not willing to work. So it will always, always, always eventually fail. So if you have a company that your, the people uh, are not willing to work, you will see that you need to do something about it or otherwise you will not have a company. How do you handle this situation? Because uh, most countries are corrupt. So you, you actually need to take responsibility and create around you a money attracting viewpoint. And one of the things that we will do in the business class, we will teach how to handle those situations. There are over 32 pages of tax law in the US and the wealthy pay uh, even... Uh, no, no, no. Yes, all of those things just mean that uh, the US is bankrupt and indeed it's bankrupt. And you think, well, but uh, it survived uh, the last 100 years. <laughs> in 100 years is nothing. 300 years is a speck of time in relationship to billions of years. How long it took um, Rome to go bankrupt? Are you with me? Uh, tax uh, money is being spent on many things other than infrastructure, including the war mongering. Uh, yes, there's many, 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 many wrong use of tax. But if you don't pay tax, it means you don't like profit. And even if the tax is incorrect, what you need to do is to, within the game that you're in, just make more money. I, 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 this is really what you need to do. If you try to avoid tax, you will not make money. That's, that's all. Okay. There is no such thing as tax-free country. Maybe you don't pay income tax, yes? But when you buy something, they collect tax in some way. 
when you import, when you buy something, there is a tax. Country cannot live without tax. So the tax that they do is they say, okay, fine, we have so much natural resources, so we don't need tax. The tax is there. They, they, you, they're using your natural resources, which is yours, yes? There is tax. There is no, no organization that can live only by, uh, by spending money. And the, the organization that's called the government make its money by tax. If, but if the tax was appropriate, it will be based on how much he helped the, the citizen. So I, if I was uh, uh, doing some kind of a tax uh, system, I will build a tax system that will actually say, this is how much I help you, Mr. Citizen, when you went over this road or when you did that or when you did that, this is how much I helped you to make money and to live and that's how much you pay me. I will not just put a tax, income tax, or this tax, or this tax. I will do it totally differently. But that's a different story. We're not talking about that, okay? We're just talking about what's the money attracting viewpoints. But generally, good tax will be tax on help. Even the government help you, then you pay them tax. If the government don't help, I don't pay tax. That should be the law. Like if this client, if this company paid me, I'll pay them. If this company didn't pay me, I don't pay them. Tax is just um, the invoice from the government for help, or should be. Like the invoice from a company for the service they provide you. Poor people want to pay little tax. Rich people want to pay a lot of tax. Yes, yet as little as it's allowed by law. If you're trying not to pay tax, you will see you will lose all your money. I've seen, I've helped a lot of rich people that, that have money or lost money. When they lost their wealth is because they tried to not pay tax. I saw people that made billions of dollars and lost all of it or almost all of it because they tried to not pay tax. I promise you, it's just un Un unbelievable. And they thought that they're smart. Mm -mm, they were not. The prerequisite for success is the decision to love paying tax while paying as little as is legally allowed and never avoiding paying tax illegally. Never, 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 never. So far, so good? Excellent. Next, a step-by-step -step plan for a swollen bank account. There are endless ways to increase your income, but you need to do all those ways. What you need, you don't need to do all those millions of ways. What you need is to do the bare minimum that is required to bring the expected result. So far so good, everyone with me? So there are many, 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 many ways to increase your income, but what you need is to find the bare minimum, because in any case, you are busy and there's a lot of things that's going on. You don't need to look busy. You don't need to send 10,000 flyers if one mail will bring the result. You don't need six hours a sales cycle if you can close in 20 minutes. Do you understand the, the principle? There are 14 exact steps to achieve the expected result. Only 14. Okay? If you know them, you'll have money. If you don't know them, you'll be overwhelmed by so many things that needs to be done, and so you will do nothing. We will learn all those steps, all those steps as part of the business class. Okay, we learned those 14 steps as part of the business class. I highly suggest that you will join the business class. Gali, maybe you can write the link in the chat. 
the first the first uh, lesson in it will be free so be there if you're in cape town it's live and you will have an added value because there will be a direct discussion with me i can handle specific things that you have so join the business class i will give you the 14 exact exact steps to achieve the expected results in your life whatever is the expected results that you want and i promise you that like today what i showed you was unexpected you will learn there a lot of unexpected but necessary necessary not just a lot of things because i want to talk a lot necessary every line if you will re-listen to this webinar you'll see every line every word i tell you is really important and of course simple because if it's not simple it's, it's lies so be at the business class and i promise you not only that your money issues will be solved but lots of other health a uh, wealth a uh, relationship many other issues will be solved for you uh, because when you learn about the truth it applies to everything so the first one is free be there uh, and you will see your life will not be the same thank you very much thank you for attending this series and um, i love you and i will see you next week in the business class in cape town and online we i think that the business class in cape town is almost full am i right but i think it's almost full yes it's almost full okay good so if you want register quickly 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 don't wait um and thank you everyone thank you for attending thank you for participating and um, thank you for Anna for helping uh, on the administration. She was at the background doing all the, uh, make sure that you join in and you can actually uh, chat and so on. So, and she helps with all the design of the webinar, of the slides, etc. So thank you very much for Anna. And uh, yes, thank you, Gali. Yes, it is extra webinars. Uh, because I always like to exchange in abundance. I always like to give more than expected because I understand the principle of if you pay me $1, I need to give you at least 10. And I think this, uh, Gali, how much this uh, series cost? $50 or something? $30, something like that? I don't remember how much it costs, but something like that, let's say $50, probably less, but let's say $50. I have no doubt that if you do what I taught you in these seminars, in this series, uh, you'll make $300,000. No doubt, zero doubt. How do I know? Because I made it. And I made much more just by knowing some of those things. So that's all. Thank you very much. And I will see you on Friday, 2 p.m. in the waterfront in Captain or online. Bye-bye.